All right, let's see if we can kill this. It's Monday morning, class is about to start, but I wanna do like a really quick synopsis of what today is going to look like because I think this will help some people. Folks in the comments have been asking me like kind of break my lessons down a little bit. So here's a quick snapshot. If this is not enough, just leave it in the comments below and I'll make sure that I uh, try and fill in the gaps for you wherever I can. So I got two different classes today. The ninth grade wrote ghost stories last week. Uh, they had to write a ghost story that has never been written before. And the idea there is that it's gonna give me some insight on how well they write, how well they understand assignments, how well they can read in front of other people in class today i just go on youtube i look up fireplace i put a fireplace up on my whiteboard it gets projected up there the students sit in a chair next to it i put on eerie music and we turn the lights down in the room and they have to read the ghost stories and it's really fun someone doesn't want to read their ghost story they can choose to have somebody else read it for them if they'd like and then if they don't want it read and they don't want to read it themselves that's fine but typically i'll give like a couple of extra points for the kids that read in front of the class because I tell them that like public speaking is one of the biggest fears that most people have. And so it's very common to feel like that in the beginning of the year, but I'm gonna work on that as the year goes on. And I will pressure kids to some extent later on to make sure that everyone is getting up in front and they're speaking at some point to try and whittle away at that fear. The sophomores are reading children's books again. The journal entry, I put a journal entry up on the board and they have a bound composition book. They keep all their journal entries. They all get dated. They all have to have the question written down and they have to have an answer. That is sometimes five sentences, sometimes 15 sentences long, whatever I deem is appropriate for that particular prompt. Today's is what makes a good children's book. And I want them to address plot, characters, and illustration. So think back about a children's book that you had when you were a kid. What stuck out about that book that made it meaningful to you or made it, you know, the book that you're bringing up today as a, as a 15 or 16 year old kid. Then I brought in a whole bunch of really simple books. Uh, Pete the Cat's one of my favorites because these books all have that story arch in them. They have a beginning, a middle, and an ending. And then I gave the kids a chart that had that triangle on it where it says exposition, rising action, climax, falling action. They have to just simply read this book and then point out those things. I also want to know the antagonist, the protagonist, and then that's it for today. They have to do that with two books and we're going to talk about it. And this is really just base knowledge. It's making sure that we're all on the same page, that we all remember like what those terms mean and what happens at what point in the story. And then tomorrow we're going to go a little deeper. We're going to talk about things like what does the cover of a children's book tell you? How often do they prompt you at the end of the page to keep going so that you want to keep reading the book? So was there a question? Was there a half thought? Was there some sort of clear hanger that wanted you to go forward why did the author pick these types of illustrations in order to sort of in order to get his words across like why why did they pick why do you think that artist and that writer worked together to create this particular book and a number of other questions i'll get into that tomorrow but that's essentially what's going down today i think it's going to be awesome and we'll see, we're going now. All right, we're a few periods in and it's going well. I'm learning that books like The Giving Tree by Shel Silverstein are a little bit trickier because they are, there's not a clear beginning, middle and end. Like there's no climactic moment in it that the kids can see. And so that was actually good because it made us have to look at that story arch and realize that not everything is like going to be exactly pointed out for you. Other books that were difficult, Skippy John Jones, if anyone ever read this, it's about a cat that wants to be a chihuahua. And in this story, he wants to be in the circus. The dialect is very, very hard to read. And so they had a hard time actually reading the book and getting through it without just like laughing their butts off. The Pete the Cat books are working really well. A couple of other books that are, that are kind of more typical storyline. In the groups, I decided to have one person read, one person fill out the form, and one person discussed it with the rest of the class and said, this is what we found in our book. The, the one question that I did get that I thought was interesting is someone asked if we are in the slow class because we are reading children's books which we always have to take a step back and talk about what words like that mean. Just like when kids say the word retarded in class to find someone and I say, let's stop for a second. Let's analyze what you're saying and figure out if that's the right word or if there's a better word we could be using in place of that because I don't think you know what you're saying right now. Once we got through that, I really just explained and, and maybe like some of you are wondering why I would bother reading children's books in class with high schoolers. I think that for what I'm reading for, this subject matter, like children's books, and you know if you read children's books, if you're an adult, um, or if you're a parent and you read them to your kids, like 
Some of them have a very clear message. They're able to talk about things like we can read illusion in here, onomatopoeia, personification. We can learn protagonist and antagonist. We can learn climax. We can learn conflict, whether it's an internal or external conflict that a character is having, whether it's man versus nature or man versus man. All are encapsulated in these books. And just because they're children's books doesn't mean that they should just be thrown out. I think that instead, Instead of reading like a tired, dusty old story that like the kids aren't really interested in, I can start with this. And that's what I told them. I said, I just wanted to make this fun, move us through a bunch of stories so that we can learn what we need to learn. And then we'll get into longer texts. Kids are trying to get in here because it's lunch and they want to eat with me. But I trapped them outside because I had stuff to do. I had to talk to you guys. I'm not just leaving you guys hanging. That's where we are, where we are now. Thank you. way late in the day. I didn't have a chance earlier in the day. And I just thought I recorded this whole thing, but I didn't hit the record button. Cause you know what? That's what happens after nine hours in school and you still gotta go home and do Teacher Talk Live tonight. Real quick, this is what went down today. The freshmen started a project where they had to just outline their life between the time that they were born and now. So 10 events that made them who they are today. So maybe that is someone was born, someone died, someone moved somewhere, you met your best friend, you met a mentor, you became religious, you read a particular book or saw a certain movie that inspired you. 10 moments that took you from the time you were born till now and made you into the person you are today. Then we talked about a few of those and then the freshmen watched clips from the movie Troy, which don't judge me, I know it's not a very good movie, but there are elements in it that, that will lead us into the Odyssey and I wanted them to see certain things. So we'll watch clips, I talk about them and it's really just amping up these next two days until we start reading the Odyssey. Sophomores continued on with the children's book theme that we've been doing. Not in a house, not with a mouse. Damn. I would not eat them here or there. I would not eat them anywhere. I would not eat green eggs and ham. No. I do not like them Sam I am. And the way that they did that today was I actually told them today they're going to start writing a children's book and they had to come up with a few simple things. One, I gave them this paper, which you probably can't see very well, and I can't get all the way in frame, but I will tell you what it says. They had to tell me a simple plot that they thought their story could have. They had to tell me what characters were in their story, and they had to tell me what type of illustrations. And we talked about how different books have different types of illustrations. So Dr. Seuss has a very iconic look to it. But you could think about in terms of cartoons, when you were a kid, Little Bill had a certain type of animation and Transformers had a different type of animation. What style did you think lent itself the best to the type of story you're going to tell? And since this is all going to be done online using online software, the kids are going to be able to like pull pictures from different places and they won't necessarily have to draw. They can draw if they want to, but that's really just to showcase and let kids kind of show off a little bit if they're really good at drawing and that's something they want to bring to the table to be able to do that. But I find that like most of my students are terrible at drawing. Even their stick figures look like they were done while riding on the back of the bus. Then they had the, at the bottom part of this, they did tell me what the conflict was going to be in their story and then actions that would be taken to overcome the conflict and complications that might come up during that time. The way I broke it down was if you go see like a Transformers movie or you go see a superhero movie in the summer, they don't, the superhero doesn't just see the problem and then head, you know, right on and like defeat the bad guy on the first time, right? They have to try to be, defeat the bad guy. They usually get knocked down. They have to come up with a bunch of different things that they can do to be successful in this. So what's your conflict? And then how is your protagonist going to try and overcome that? But they're gonna to have to try and take steps to be able to do that. And so they broke that down in class today. Look, this is one of those projects that I told them, this project could either be completely awesome or could totally suck, but it's completely up to you as to whether it does one or the other. So I spent my day going around meeting with students and trying to get them excited about their topic, giving them little ideas and saying, oh man, it would be awesome if you did this or like, have you thought about this? That really got kids excited. And then I started telling them like, yo, don't tell anyone about this. Like your story is gonna be amazing. Don't share your idea with anyone because I wanna totally surprise them when we present them in class. And that did build a lot of excitement. And then I made sure to tell them at the end, like, yo, there's great ideas in here. Like this is gonna crush 
And that just built that, that energy in the classroom. On Thursday, they're going to come in, they're gonna trade papers and they're gonna have mini conferences with one another to say like, hey, I really like this part of your story, but have you thought about doing it like this to just sort, sort of like start building that communal aspect of the classroom where we're learning together, we're learning to give feedback and we're learning to take feedback without like it like breaking your heart or something like that. So I'm looking forward to that too. Wednesday, tomorrow is just independent reading day. So we're just chilling, doing independent reading. I think that was it. There's quite a bit of drama in school today. Trying to handle that, trying to help kids out. It's the beginning of the year. Students that are like coming in that, you know, don't have a place to sit downstairs or want to eat in my room, but like learning how to eat in my room. We're like, we're not just being loud and being nuts. It's a safe place for everyone where you can like be calm and chill out and because most people are looking for that this time of the day. Like it's very, very energetic in school and trying to just find that safe place to just chill with your friends and be cool. It's after school. I'm sitting down with Hugs real quick. Hugs, what do you, is there anything you're looking forward at doing better with this year than you did last year? Well, of course you know, it's gonna get a lot harder. So I gotta do my homework a lot more. Gotta study more and I gotta uh, pay attention a lot more. So probably just, you know, just more work ethics, you know, to come as the year goes on. But yeah, I am looking forward to doing more this year. Cool. Uh, is there, what, do you have a goal, an end goal yet for like getting a high school? Like what do you want to do with yourself? Not yet, I'm still thinking, but like it's lots of options. Um, and is there anything you're just excited about this year? Like doesn't have to be necessarily like a certain class or mm -hmm. something like that, but like anything you're looking forward to in this, during the school year? Well, um, this year I got geometry, so, you know, I'm excited to try that out. All right. Mm. What, why, why? Well, I always wanted to know how to do geometry. I would see on the cartoons, you know, when they're in class, they're doing geometry. So I'm like, yeah. Nice. So I'm also just like, I want to, I want to see how geometry is. So I want to try it on myself. So, you know. Cool. Is there, is there any teacher this year that you think is like stands out to you, like as in, in a good way? Right. Don't. I don't want to trash him. <laughs> uh, Mr. Wascom's pretty cool. Wascom's the truth, man. Yeah. And Miss Rylander, she's she's pretty fun. Cool. All right, man. Thanks, dude. Yep. Cool. All right. Talk to Marilyn Manson over here real quick. Um, I had you on the end of last year on the reflection thing. Yes, you, did. you got a lot of love, man, on that. Like people were were loving that because you're so eloquently spoken and stuff. Thank you, you too. Um, is there anything you're looking forward to this year, the 2017-2018 school year? Um, this year I'm really looking forward to getting more opportunities because now that I'm a junior, this is an important year. So hopefully you mean more opportunities, not education-wise, but something fun this year because sophomore year we really well, for me, I really did get more opportunities that I feel like I should have gotten. So hopefully this year as a junior, I've matured over the years. So I'll hopefully get more opportunities to do more things that I'll enjoy. Okay. Uh, is there anything in particular opportunity-wise that you're thinking of that you're like, you've seen other guys do before you or something like that that you're Um, about? I'm excited to doing one of the college tours. I've seen a lot of um, students when I was a sophomore and freshman year coming into high school, they were going to college tour, looking at different colleges, seeing what interests them. So I'm hoping I can do that this year, get the opportunity to do that so I can think ahead of time. So instead of me having to worry about that in my senior year, I can already know what college I'll be thinking about going to in the future. Last question. There's a lot of new teachers that watch this channel. They want to know how to be the best teachers that they can. What would you say is something that stands out to you about any teacher that like you would say you should try and be like this or think or at least give them some food for thought on like how to be the best they can be okay teachers this is how you can be the best you can be don't make the so much of the teaching aspect about just the students make it so that the students can get somewhat interested and don't make it such a boring class make it that everybody can get involved and don't try to be somebody you're not. Understand that if you have something you have to teach that the school is telling you to teach, try to spice it up a little bit and make it fun and make it your own. That's how the school sees, wow, this uh, female teacher or this male teacher is really trying to spice things up and make things different instead of having it all be the same. Because when stuff is the same, it's the same trend. It gets real boring. And if you change things up, it gets real fun. It's more interesting. So that's one way you can try to be the best teacher you can be. That's a good answer, man. What's well, your favorite ice cream flavor? Man, chocolate. What about your favorite type of donut? I have to say chocolate. You really like chocolate a lot. I'm a chocolate man. I don't know. I don't know what to say back to that. <laughs> Neither right. do I. Thanks, man. Well. 
Super quick vlog because it's Wednesday and I was done school four hours ago, something like that. And I'm still sitting here because I had, so the way our online grade book books work, you can't put your grades in until a certain time. And so I've been like accruing all of these assignments. And then when they opened up, I wanted to make sure grades were due by tomorrow night. Tomorrow night is back to school night. I love back to school night. I'll talk a little bit about that, I guess, tomorrow, but um, I love it. I think it's great. I love meeting the parents. I love speaking in front of them. I love getting them excited about my class and kind of like setting the expectation of who I am and what I'd like to see happen that year. So I did a couple of things today. Today was independent reading day, which means all students have an independent reading book. It's not something that we read as a group in the class and they have to read that book for 20 minutes. If they can do that successfully, I give them the last five minutes to just chill. It's great in so far as you brought your book and you read for 20 minutes. And I tell the kids that's like all the grade I want to give them for that particular assignment, just because I want them to read because they want to read, which is why I'll order any, why I will order anything that they want so they can sit anywhere they want in the room unless that becomes an issue and then you get sent back to your seat. But typically we're good for definitely the first 15 minutes. I find that what works really well is if I read with them. So I'm reading uh, my time-honored Tattoos on the Heart by Father Gregory Boyle. I talk about this book all the time. Some days I just need to read that book. It like refreshes me. It makes me want to love kids when I don't, when I'm like aggravated or when there's too much to do. Kind of like puts me in that good spot. And then I can like be really empathetic or sympathetic or kind or compassionate or whatever you need that day. I read with the kids and that also just sets the tone. Like the kids see me reading with them and we're doing this together. At the end, I'll have them maybe write something really quickly about what they read or we'll just pop around the room and I'll say like, who dealt with an external conflict today? Who dealt with an internal conflict today? Which kind was it? Who, tell me, someone tell me about what happened with their protagonist that day. And so those sort of things, it's like a constant reminder, a constant review of the stuff that we go over. I spent hours doing grades after school. It makes a teacher feel better than a clear desk. It's just like, just like sprinkling magic on your morning. It's kind of like when you make your bed and then you go to bed at night and you're like, yeah, yeah bed's made. You can leave your classroom looking right and you walk in in the morning. Bam. It's like a good start to your day. And then I did uh, Amazon book orders for my guys. So all the books that they wanted, which is everything from a book about Steve Jobs, a book about some vlogger that I never heard of from YouTube, The Pact, which is about three gentlemen, African-American gentlemen. I think they were from Newark and they decided they were all going to become doctors. I had a student that wants to become a doctor. And so that's what he told me once. 99 personal money management principles to live by. That was a real book that a 14 year old wanted and make sure that he remembers my name after graduation. One of my favorite books that gets lost every year is the rap yearbook. It is every important song in rap history since 1979. And then they break it down. Like what did it mean? Who did it? Why was this important? It's awesome. Then I have a kid that's like watched too much Narcos this summer. So he wants like a bunch of Pablo Escobar books. And of course, a bunch of killer whale books for those twins that can't stop getting enough of killer whale books. If it makes you read, like I said, I'll do it. All right, that's it. I'm gonna go home, be with my kids. Back to school night for Brody. So I'm pretty pumped about that because I get to see his new school. And until tomorrow, guys. YouTube, we've made it to Friday. And so I didn't vlog yesterday and largely because we had back to school night. And so there wasn't really time after school to do it because the kids were in here. Some kids like wait till their parents show up at back to school night, which means you have 10 kids in your room with nothing to do. And so they just talk to you for a long time. And you know, it's a, it's a fine line. And I think this is an interesting thing uh, to talk about, especially for new teachers or teachers that like are really relational with students. It is a hard thing to say no to students, right? So if someone comes in and someone needs your time or someone's upset or someone just wants someone to talk to, you know, I, I just don't know all the time. Like maybe no one talks to you at home. I don't know, maybe, but on the, at the same time, maybe you're driving your mom crazy because all you do is talk all the time. So it's hard to say no to kids and that is, one of my biggest weaknesses, and it's a reason that I don't get a lot of stuff done that I need to, because I will literally drop what I'm doing. And if you need to talk to someone, if you have a problem, if you want to just like chill and I don't know, just talk about I don't know with the Walking Dead, whatever it is, it's hard for me to say no to kids. So it's like maybe that's a blessing and a curse. I'm not really sure, but it definitely, definitely holds me up all the time. Back to school night was great. Most of you have already done back to school night because you know when you live in Philly. We're like 
eight weeks behind everybody else. Back to school night for me this year was a lot different. Uh, I didn't give my usual spiel because I knew a lot of the parents, they were in 10th, the kids were in 10th grade and our schedule was a little off. Back to school night, I love, like I love it so much. And the main reason for that is one, most parents come in, their business, I give them my spiel, I tell them what they expect for the year, homework, classwork, how I grade stuff, what the class is gonna look like and stuff like that. And then afterwards, I love talking to parents um, and just getting one-on-one -on -one time, finding out a little bit more about who that student is or why they're so quiet or why they're so loud or where they would work best in the classroom. Do you want them to stand in the back? Do you want them to sit in the front? Do you want them to have the ability to like sit on the couch or something like that? Finding out that information from parents is key. And the one thing I've learned since becoming a parent is that parents know kids better than teachers know kids a lot of times. Now, teachers might have more insight in certain ways, but as a whole person, your, the parent is gonna be able to say like, nope, he's acting lazy, push him harder, or have more grace with him, or he responds to like positive reinforcement instead of like you crushing him. And, and that takes time out of the year for me to figure out how to discipline and how to talk to each student because it's all different. I don't do like a blanket approach. Getting a little bit of insight from the parents at least informs you on some of those matters. It's a little crooked, I feel like I need to stand off center. Um, here's my insight for, for Friday. I come in the school late. Here's a little bit of insight that I would say for new teachers. You need to train your students to do everything because a lot of times I get reports back that a sub will say, this student was doing this or these guys are trying to get away with this or this is what happened while you were gone. And my students should know better especially when it's stuff that they don't get away with when I'm there. So sometimes kids try and like, they do try and pull the same stuff in my class and it happens when the sub's there. But if you always stay in your seat, get your work done, don't take 10 minute bathroom breaks. Like if those things are the constant when I'm there, I need to tell students, look, when I'm not here, I need you to do the same exact thing. You're not allowed to be like trying to take advantage of the sub because that looks bad on me. And the way that I convey that is like, when you go to your grandparents' house or you go to a friend's house, you want that parent to send a good report back to your mom or dad, right? Because when your mom finds out that you weren't on point and you were making her look like a fool, then that's where you're gonna get yourself in trouble. I always let them know that I 100% back anyone that subs my class or anyone that covers my class because that's important because they are adults and you're representing us and you're rep representing our class and our school and so it's important that you get yourself on point and act correctly so that when I come back, I get a good report. I love when I don't say that to a class yet and they already do it and then I can just kind of affirm them. But today I got some negative feedback about a particular class from dudes that I should not be getting negative feedback about. And so I have to go and have conversations with them. But I'll tell you what, that'll be the last time that that happens because I will talk to them. I will back up that sub and it won't happen again. So yeah, came in late today and now, you know, the day is just getting finished up here at school. All right, that's it for today. I'm about to head home. I'm looking forward to some time with the family this weekend. I wanna say real quick, so excited about this week. Teacher Talk Live coming up. I have Rafe Esquith, who is my number one teacher hero of all time is gonna be on my show on Wednesday night. He has a prior engagement on Tuesday night, so we can't do Tuesday like we typically do. We're gonna do Wednesday night. I am so stoked. I wish I could have a four hour conversation with this guy. So that's coming up on Wednesday of this week. It's gonna be the best. That happens on Facebook Live and then it'll be rebroadcast on YouTube. Before I go, I wanna say, this is kind of a new format where I'm going through what's happening during the week. If you like something, please let me know. If you dislike something, please let me know. If you wish I would add something, subtract something, pivot something, this is for you. I'm trying to share this stuff to help those of you that are out there that are teaching. If there's anything you think I could do better, if you saw or heard me talk about something and you think, I could change something for the benefit of my students, please share that down below. And if you have anything that you would like to see me address coming up in the next few weeks or whenever, please let me know that as well and I'll be sure to get on it. Thanks guys, peace. It's end of the day on Friday, mm -hmm. how was your week? It was good. You know? What was the best part of your week? The best part? Hey, Brendan, you should get this on YouTube. Uh, go home. How was lunch? It was good. Really? Yeah. I feel like it looks terrifying most of the time. It was good, it was just loud though. What are you doing this weekend? Am I doing this weekend? Sleep. All right. Uh, don't do drugs. Oh, drugs, they're too expensive. Never you gotta find a cheaper hobby. You know what I mean? Oh, never do drugs. Just saying. <laughs> don't laugh. That's not funny. Oh, it's, it's important. All right. I'm going this weekend. I'm going, you know, oh, I live the dream.
There's a new Minecraft mod that came out this weekend. Update, so you know that's what I'm gonna do. All right, Gant. Have a good weekend. I'm sure the sound is terrible on this. End of the week, we ended up going to the shore for the first day of fall. We're down at the beach in Ocean City in Jersey. We're playing in the tide pools right now, and that's it. The sound is probably the worst, so I'm gonna cut it there and just show you some images. Peace, guys. And jelly and driving on the beach at sunset. I mean, come on, this is awesome. <laughs> Look at the Why juice in Jersey. I'm not even 100% sure this is legal. Yeah.